Today we're going to perform a basic field strip disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly of this 6 hour E938. The first thing we're going to do when handling any weapon is of course ensure that the weapon is safe. So I'm going to remove the source of the ammunition. Then I'm going to bring the slide back and perform a physical and a visual inspection. Now that we know the weapon is safe, we can begin with the field strip. In order to disassemble this particular firearm, this slide stop actually doubles as a disassembly pin. This is the other side of it. In order to depress this pin to get it out, we're going to have to bring the slide back. If you look right here, you'll see that there is a slide disassembly notch and it needs to be aligned with the slide stop tab. This longer part needs to fit in this groove. That's how far back we have to bring it. So I'm going to grip the gun like so. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but this is lined up. There's like a little hole and it makes a full circle. So now that I know it's lined up, I can depress this button on this side. Thankfully, it's not hard to push that button out. I'm gonna push it out and let's see if I can show you again. You'll see that the slide stop tab actually kind of just starts to lift up. I should really be able to just take it out. I'm gonna push it out like so. And then sometimes if it doesn't come out, you can turn the gun over and maybe it'll fall out. Now that I remove the slide stop tab, I'm going to remove the slide by simply pushing it forward. Now, if you feel yourself having any tension to push this forward, stop and reevaluate what you're doing to make sure that it's safe. I'm going to also make sure that the safety is off. And now that the safety is off, I'll be able to push this forward. And as I mentioned, it should come off just like so. There's a couple things that are a little bit different about this gun. As you see right here, here is your ejector. And I'm going to talk about it later on, but this little piece, we really need to make sure that we don't damage it. But it's very important to pay attention to it because in order to reassemble it, it actually has to be downward for the slide to go back on. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. The next little tricky thing is this particular guide rod and spring, it has a lot of force. As in all gun safety, it's always recommended to wear safety goggles when you're handling your firearms. Because this is packed with so much tension, some people actually prefer to remove it this way so that if it did become a projectile, it's not projecting towards you, even though whatever is in the path, just like you're on a range, it's in the line of fire. And putting it back in requires a little patience and <laughs> I'd like to say strength as well. In order to remove this guide rod and recoil spring, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Clearly I have nails, so it's gonna be hard for me to really just pull back on it the way most people do. So what I'm going to do is try to get a good grip and it is recommended you should use two fingers just to and also always main, maintain control of it so that it doesn't just pop out. And once it's out, this particular spring, one side is supposed to fit more snug than the other, but it seems pretty much the same to me. I mean, I guess I can, I guess, I guess it does feel a little bit more snug, but I don't know if you really wanted to, you could mark the smaller sides or the larger side so you know which way to reassemble it. Next, you're going to remove your barrel. You're simply going to remove your barrel just like any other barrel, slide it forward and bring it out. Now we performed our basic fill strip. From here, let's get into cleaning. As we can see, there is quite a bit of, it looks like the person who owns this gun was having a lot of fun, but it's pretty dirty and we're going to clean it. What I'm gonna be using to clean this gun today is my favorite, Oppie's number nine gun bore cleaner. I'm going to use the lubricating gun oil. This is the same, but it's just the elite version. I have some patches on deck and paper towels. I have the appropriate bore brush and mop. I have some gun cleaning brushes. These gun cleaning brushes have that dual head or you can use a regular to good old toothbrush. I'll be using these gun tips. I really started becoming a fan of these when I started cleaning guns and you can use them to clean all through the firearm. Of course, I have my guide rod. And remember, when you're using these guide rods, if it turns like so, allow it to turn as you're pushing it through the barrel so that it can follow the rifling inside. I also have a couple microfiber towels on 
back, I got another gun cloth and I have a silicone cleaning cloth. As most of you know already, I always say to wear some gloves while you're cleaning your firearms and handling them just because you just don't want to get all that gun bore cleaner into your skin. Voila. First thing I always like to work on when I am cleaning my firearms is of course the barrel. And this barrel is pretty dirty. So I'm going to dip my bore brush into our hot piece. As I always mentioned, you always want to ash anything through your firearm in the same trajectory that the bullet would go from the breech to the muzzle. I'm going to pass this through and I'm allowing the rod to spin so that and follow the rifling. Everybody doesn't do this, but some people don't like to bring it back through. I'm just going to pass this through here again. I'm actually just going to let that sit and marinate, but I still definitely want to hit this little feed ramp just a little bit. So now that is soaking, put that to the side and proceed with the other parts of the firearm. Let's look at our guide rod and spring. Just gonna grab a patch and put that down. And I'm actually going to use my brush because you need to get in there and clean that out. So I'm just gonna grab my brush and brush it out. So I'll just grab this little plastic pick that I have so I want to get in there. Okay, so I'll just take this patch, so I run it over, and go through and clean my spring. Now I'll take a clean patch and walk over here. Make sure we get all that out of there. So this is the tighter side. Clean my slide stop, this assembly pin. And this part is actually pretty dirty. You can't see it, but I can see it. <laughs> now, let us look at our slide. And I'm gonna go to work. Now, one thing I just wanna mention, this is where your firing pin area is. And you really wanna make sure that you don't get any oil um, going deep down in there. It's actually recommended to, when you're cleaning your slide, to clean it with the actual muzzle facing downward, just so that you can prevent a lot of oil being, being in there. Let's just go to work. And once again, you know, you don't want a bunch of oil on your gun, but I like to just, and you know, how you clean your gun is how you clean your gun, but I like to say if it gets really greasy or oily, just make sure you go back and clean it out properly. And you know what? I normally just go ahead and run my clean patches through, but just because there's so much buildup in there, I'm actually gonna let it sit while I just go over to the frame and then I'll come back and do that. So let's proceed to our frame. And as you can see, of course, there is a lot going on in there and I'm just gonna get in there and go to work. It looks like, I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like this part inside looks a little greenish. So I'm not sure if that's the color it's supposed to be or if it's just because it's older, but definitely wanna make sure I clean in here. And another thing, I'm gonna mention this ejector. Pay attention to this. You do not want to ruin this part, okay? So be careful when you're cleaning it.
definitely want to make sure inside this magwell is clean. Always being cognizant of this ejector. And I, I really wonder if you can see it. I'm not sure if you, you can see what I'm looking at. This, the screw that's in there is like green. So I am just going to keep at it and make sure that I clean as much as I can. And you definitely want to make sure that you pay particular attention to the area where that feed ramp goes in there because it does get a lot of wear and there's a lot of carbon buildup in there. So now I'm going to get in there with a few clean patches and clean this out. And you, you could take a like a jag and put your patch on to clean it out, but I'm okay with this today. Everybody has their own ways of wanting to clean their guns and you gotta find what works best for you. Grab one of my gun tips and just go in for all the more detailed little places that I can't reach. Now I'll just grab a clean one and go back over it. Because like I said, you really don't want oil leaking from your gun. Okay. Looks much better to me. Just grab a patch. One more game. getting clean patches so I'm totally happy with this let's go back to our slide and use this semi clean gun tip and get in there Once again, making sure that you get all of this oil out of there. Okay. Grab the mag. Doing this little once over on here. And of course you can disassemble this magazine. I have heard that it's a little trickier than others, but you can definitely take it apart completely of course as you can any other magazine with the proper guidance
I'm actually just getting rid of some of this grit with the clean Q-tip. I'm not putting any oil in here. So we have a clean magazine. Now that we have everything else clean, let's go back to our barrel. Voila. In order to get in here, I'm actually, you can really use a jag and pass a paper towel or patch through it. For purposes of this video, I am going to use this bore mop. And if you're not aware, you know, these gun cleaning rods vary in different lengths. I just use the shorter burst part and it won't allow me to attach any accessories without this adapter. So now that I've attached that, it should be much easier. And I'm just going to bring it back through. I'm not worried about disattaching it. So that looks good. Grab a clean patch, do another once over. A little bit more than I'd like to see. Let's flip that over and do it again. Not too worried because I promised the owner of this firearm that I would make a special video. So I'll be cleaning it again anyway. Okay, now that we have cleaned the weapon, let's lubricate it. And as usual with any of these firearms, you just really wanna make sure that you're lubricating parts of the gun that have the most friction. So I'm actually going to drop a little on my rail. And you don't want to put a lot. Here we go, let that run down the side of that rail. Back that up for a little second. And then I want to lubricate inside of the rails here. So I'm just going to put one drop at the top. And then another drop over here at the top. And then I'll let that run down. I'd actually lubricate this part right here, the square size, because, you know, it, it does move so much. And I'll just take a Q-tip and move that around. I don't want a lot on there at all. Just all of those high friction points. Just put a little there. This has ran down this side and then just running that through there. Like I said, you don't want too much, but you want just enough. Good frame of reference when you're lubricating your firearm is you want enough oil so that you can see the sheen, but it shouldn't respond to gravity. And oil leaking at your gun might be cool. Now the same here. I'm just gonna go back through here with my hand. Make sure it's guided all the way down. Don't want it coming out my muzzle area. I'm actually going to uh, just rub the same already lubricated Q-tip right here. And as you can see, I'm not really putting anything on there. It has a lot of friction. Even for your spring, right? This part gets probably the most action. I'm just gonna put just a little bit of oil on it. Drop it a little bit on the guide rod. spring I will just drop a little patch put some oil on it this is the side and I'm just gonna lubricate this with a light touch of oil all right now it's time to reassemble the firearm the first thing we're gonna do is put the barrel back into the slide it's like every other gun slide it in Bring it back so that it drops into that little groove. So in order to put your guide rod and spring back into the slide, as you can see, there is this like U-shaped part and then there's the round top. This round part has to face you. This round part goes on top. This part with the curvature goes towards the barrel. So this tension inside of this spring is a lot. <laughs> So you really want to be careful that you don't bend it so you, or you don't destroy it, right? Oh, so you can do it how we took it out where I lined it up and I use both fingers and I can push it back in like this. But you got to be careful because you just don't want to bend the spring. So what I'm going to do is what a lot of people do is take 
like a wooden dowel or something that fits in here to meet your rod and then push this part out and that way you're able to put the spring back into the slide a lot more seamlessly and once again this curved part goes down please use caution when doing this I honestly I don't think I've seen a spring <laughs> with this much tension so be careful use caution make sure that while you're doing it nothing is out there that can be injured or damaged if you do lose control so as you can see I put this little plastic gun tip in there and I lined it up and I'm literally just pushing the gun tip out but it's helping me keep the spring straight and then once I get there then I'm still holding on to it because I want to make sure that I don't lose control of this and I know it's on there but I'm just emphasizing that and now I know that this is back on here the next part once again be very careful about this ejector so this ejector needs to be depressed only far enough to provide clearance for the slide if you push it too far it can cause the ejector to bind inside of that frame and then you'll have to send it into sig to fix your gun so basically this pen needs to go in this hole right here so i'm lining up my rails and just so you see what i'm talking about so this ejector needs to go under the slide, right? You can't just you can't just push it back, right? I'm going to push it down just enough that it'll make the pass. So I'm just pushing this down with my finger. Between this and the spring, I don't know what's more complicated. Actually, I think this is because you really need to get a good gauge of how far to depress it. And take your time if it pops back out fine don't force it be patient try it again it'll take a couple tries for you to get it right i might become a master at this by the time i'm done no i'm kidding but just be patient And now it's on there. You have to take your slide stop pin and if you put it in like so, you can miss the part on the top of the barrel lug that this part is supposed to go into. You can bring your slide back all the way and drop your slide stop pin in and it'll go down. I'm trying to do it so that you can see, see how it dropped and it went in. But look, this is still out. So in order to prevent that from coming out, you want to bring it back and just start it over, take it out. You want to push your barrel down, right? Make sure that your barrel is cleared right here. And you can actually add a little pressure to it. A lot of people have actually had to have this problem. So apply a little bit of pressure to it. And then you can take your slide stop pin now that I'm holding the barrel down, drop this pin in here once this slide disassembly notch is lined with the circle. Just put it in like that. And then bring, keep bringing it back. And it's a little tough for me. But once everything is lined up, it should drop right in. And once it goes in, now your firearm is back reassembled. So there you have it. We have completed our field strip disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly of this Sig Sauer P938. If you like this video, please click like. Even better, click subscribe, share, tune in. If you have any questions about this firearm, please go down in the comments and leave a message and let us know. If you've had any problems with this Sig Sauer P938, also, please go down in the comments and share. Have you had any problems with your ejector? Have you had any problems putting the slide stop in? How did you reassemble it? Do you have any tips or tricks? If so, please go down in the comments and share. We are all learning together and the only way we can help is by sharing knowledge. So once again, thank you for watching The Gun Love. I really appreciate your support and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.